So today we are going to talk about MPI. So MPI stands for message passing interface. Okay. So this is actually a specification for how you should implement an MPI library. So this is not the library itself. You know, for different platforms, people build different kinds of libraries which are suited for those platforms, but they have to basically adhere to all these specifications, right? So what's the advantage of that? Well, that helps you port programs, right? So if you've built a distributed program on one platform, on one distributed system, you go to another distributed system, you can carry that and compile it as it is, right? So typically, you know, your program behavior will not change. If you start making assumptions which are not there in the specification, then it may work on certain platforms, may not work on certain platforms. Okay, So we'll talk about some such cases later on. So what is it a specification for? It's a specification for a library which is used in message passing parallel programming model. And as we discussed previously, where do we use such models? Typically, we use these models in distributed memory systems. You can use them in a, on a single node as well in a shared memory system. So you have these different processes. Each one of them has a rank. So rank is nothing but the identity of a process. It's basically a number which is given to each process, which basically identifies what the process is. And typically what happens is each rank has its own address space. So rank 0 will have its own address space, rank 1 will have its own address space and so on. Typically you can't communicate using shared memory, so you have to rely on message passing, right, in order to communicate. So you have to explicitly pass messages. You know, distributed memory systems, very large scale systems are typically organized as nodes which are then connected to some interconnection network. So MPI is ideally suited for such environments, but again you can run it on a single node, right, with multiple ranks running on the same node, they will be launched as separate processes, but each one of them will have its own address space, right, that's what's important. Obviously, one of the biggest strengths of having a specification is that it makes your code portable. So how do you go about writing your code? Of course, you write in any editor, but you have to compile it using an MPI compiler, right? So MPI has to be installed on your system and some standard commands for compiling. Typically, this is for a C compiler. This depends again on, you know, which library, which implementation you've actually installed, which system you're on, whether you're on an Intel system, a power system, and so on. So there's MPI, there's MPI C++ for C++, and then there's MPI XX also for C++, and so on. All right, so you write your code, and then you basically compile it using an MPI compiler. So that will automatically link it with the appropriate MPI libraries. And when you have to run your program, the way you run it is, you say MPI run or MPI exec. You specify the number of processors using dash np. So if you say dash np4, a dot out. So it's going to execute this particular program that you have compiled on four processors. Okay. And when you give this command, it, it goes to a scheduler right, for that system, the scheduler then figures out where to launch the processes, right. So if it's a large cluster, it may launch them on four different nodes. Let's look at what a typical MPI program looks like. So what would you actually write in, in the code, right? You have to include the MPI header file. So this contains all the prototypes, definitions, etc. for all the MPI calls, right, APIs. And basically you start writing your main function and somewhere before starting to use MPI, you have to call MPI init. This initializes MPI. After this, you can start making MPI calls, right? And then you write your code, whatever work you are doing, right? And this will in turn be using MPI calls for message passing. 
and we'll shortly get into what kind of calls these are. Okay. So you do all this, and then when you're done, finally you have to call MPI finalize. That's basically the structure of an MPI program. And of course, there's lots of MPI calls you can make, and we have to uh, go through them. We'll go through them. Okay, one important thing you have to understand is, so if you say dash np4, right? Okay, what does that mean? So there are four processes which are going to get spawned. The important thing is that each one of them will be executing this exact same code. So all four of them will execute the same code. Right? So if you want one process to do something different than the other processes, you have to explicitly code it up. So there's a way to identify yourself using your rank. So if there are n processes, right, they get ranks from 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n minus 1. Right? So you can check what rank you have and based on that you can do computations appropriately. Right? So that way you can distribute the work. That's how you write the program. Okay, any questions so far? Let's look at a few of these MPI calls, some important MPI calls, so that we can start writing some basic programs. MPI com size. And what do you pass to it? You have to pass to it communicator. And you have to pass to it the address of a variable where you are going to get the size, the total number of processes. So what does this return? This basically returns you the total number of MPI processes in the system. Right? So if you launch with four MPI processes, dash np4, then inside the code, you can query the total number of processes by using this API and it will return you four. If you launch with 10, it will return you 10. The idea is that you write your code independent of how you launch it, right? Depending on the system that you're running on, you may launch with four processes, 10 processes and so on. But your code should ideally be independent of that, right? So it should figure out what is the total number of ranks and distribute the work accordingly, right? That's the idea. So we'll talk about communicators later, but for now, just understand that there is a communicator called MPI com world, which refers to the system of all the processes, okay? Now you can start defining subsets. You can say that there's a communicator which is just all the even processes, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. You can say that there's a communicator which is processes 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. So these are useful in certain scenarios which we'll again come across later. We'll just deal with MPI com world for now, okay? So in matrix algebra, while solving system of linear equations, doing matrix multipliers, and so on, you know, you use different kinds of communicators. Okay, the next important call is MPI com rank. And what are the parameters? So again, the communicator. And again, you pass a address of a variable where you want the rank returned, right? So this basically returns the identifier for this process, right? As we discussed, you know, it basically allocates numbers from 0 to n minus 1 if there are n processes, right? So each process will get a unique identifier. That's important. You need this to do the communication. 